There is a prophecy given decades ago concerning the triangle of the end. It speaks to your place in these last days, and I believe that tonight the Spirit of God is going to break open a revelation for you concerning the last days and your place in it that is going to empower you to overcome the works of the enemy and to sidestep every trap that the devil has laid for you. If you're excited about that, say hallelujah. I want you to grab your Bible and go to the book of the Gospel of John, chapter number 16. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. The Gospel of John, chapter number 16. When the Apostle Paul went to establish the church at Ephesus, he spent three years pouring into those people and building that church. You can see that in Acts chapter number 19, as well as the book of Ephesians. When he went to the church at Corinth, he spent two years building that church and raising it up and establishing a foundation. When he went to the church at Thessalonica, interestingly enough, he only had three weeks. Everybody say three weeks. And I thought it would be fascinating, what in the world did the Apostle Paul talk about when he's only got three weeks to build the church? Isn't that an interesting question? With three weeks to establish the church of God in a city that desperately needed it, the primary focus of that great apostle was the end times. I thought you saved that for mature believers. No, 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 no. You need to know the hour that you're living in. And when you understand the hour that you're living in, everything changes. According to recent surveys, 39% of Americans believe, now get this, get this, 39% of Americans believe we are living in the last day. 40, that's all, seeing everything that's going on in the world today. 42%, if I am not mistaken, 42% of Americans believe that Jesus could return in their lifetimes. How many of you are a part of the 42%? Now, what does this mean when you're looking at that 42%? Do you understand here today that although there are many who claim to be Christian, there are many who claim to be evangelical, not all who say they are of Israel are of Israel. Not all they who are savior of the kingdom of God are of the kingdom of God. In fact, Leonard Ravenhill, that great prophet of the 20th century, said that he believed that it would be, it would be surprising if even 5% of the church were actually biblically saved. So if you consider 5% of the church, which makes it much lower percentage of the nation are saved, and yet 42% believe that Jesus could return in their lifetime, that means, ladies and gentlemen, we have an unprecedented evangelistic opportunity. There are people who know the hour is late, and they know that they are not right with him. And all we have to do is remind them of the moment we're living in. And when we do, their heart is stirred within them, and they will turn. Do you know that eschatology is probably the greatest apologetic to win people to Jesus? It proves that the Bible is true. There is no other religious book that exists that predicts the future as this book does. This is a supernatural book. Did you know that 27% of the Bible was prophetic when it was written? That means one out of every four verses in your Bible deals with Bible prophecy. Yet many preachers fail to touch on it. That means they're eliminating 27% of the Word of God. The second advent of Jesus was so important that God had a man named Enoch preaching it seventh from Adam in the book of Genesis. In the 66 books of the Bible, there are 1,189 chapters. 1,189 chapters. Among those chapters, there are more than 10,000 references to the coming of the Lord. So for every chapter in the Bible, there are 10 references to the hour that you and I are living in. Somebody say, wow. 
Jesus preached 20 times about his coming. Now, Rick Renner recently came out with an amazing teaching. When you look at the Gospels, do you know how many days the Gospels focuses on? Do you know how many days of the life of Jesus that if you were to read through, not the span of time that is covered, but the actual days that are covered by the incidents that are recorded, you have about 30 days of the life of Jesus. Look at all that he did in 30 days. Look at all that he accomplished just in the 30 days that are recorded. And in the 30 days of ministry, he references his coming 20 times. Oh, the anointing of God gets on this message when you begin to preach it. Are you in John chapter number 16? If you're not there, you're probably never going to get there. Say, these are the last days. I'll read it for you, and then I'll get into some of the other stuff here. John chapter 16 and verse number 13. If you're there, begin to pray with the Holy Spirit, because if it required the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to write it, it's going to require the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to read it. How be it when he, speaking of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all Truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. Look at verse number 13. Look at verse number 13 very closely. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth. What is his name? He is the spirit of? What is the Greek word for truth? Apocalypse. The word apocalypse means to uncover, to reveal the truth. So he is the spirit of apocalypse. He is the spirit of the unveiling. He is the spirit of revelation, yes? And he is living on the inside of you. Now look at this. And he will guide you into how much truth? All truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will, look at this, show you things to come. Have you ever been in a restaurant or in public and someone close to you begins to talk about Jesus at their table, or they begin to talk about the Holy Ghost at their table, and all of a sudden your ears perk up because you want to make sure, are they really, are they talking about the Holy Ghost? You ever done that before? And somebody could be talking to you, and you don't, you're even ignoring, you're looking at them, you're going, uh-huh, uh-huh, but you're really thinking, what are they talking about over there? Because they're talking about something you're interested in. A connection's being made. When you begin to talk about the end things, the Holy Spirit gets interested. When you begin to talk about the last days, you get the Holy Spirit's attention, and he wants to begin to move in your life. I'm here to tell you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are living in the last days. It doesn't really take a genius to recognize this. How many of you believe we're living in a later time than any other generation has ever lived? Let me see your hand. Okay, just making sure. Should have had a V8. Just want to make sure. We are living in such a time that we are seeing Bible prophecy being filled. The back pages of our Bible are being seen on the front page of the newspaper seemingly every single day. We are seeing what the Bible predicted come to pass before our very eyes as the spirit of Antichrist is attempting to rise and take its place and seat of power. You don't have to be a radical Pentecostal eschatological end time pre-tribber to get this. I'm telling you, when you go to the UN, let me tell you what UN Secretary General Henry Spack said. This is the UN Secretary General, and I can assure you he's not Holy Ghost filled. UN Secretary General Henry Spack said, what we want is a man Man of sufficient stature to hold the alliances of all people and to lift us out of the economic mores in which we are sinking. Send us such a man, be he God or the devil, and we will receive him. Everybody say it's getting late. 
Recently, just a few years ago, Pope Benedict retired. Popes don't retire, ladies and gentlemen. Pope Benedict was a unique individual within the Vatican who was attempting to uproot corruption. He had uncovered some human trafficking rings as well as financial corruption in the Vatican, and he was beginning to send that same investigatory or investigative team to America to investigate the church in America when he suddenly, abruptly retires. The night that he retires, lightning strikes the Vatican. Did you know this? That's it right there. Lightning struck the Vatican, and a new pope was brought into power. Later, as we thought Pope Benedict kind of disappeared off the scene, and many didn't even know he was still alive, wrote this. Here's what he said. We see how the power of the Antichrist is expanding, and we can only pray that the Lord will give us strong shepherds who will defend his church in this hour of need from the power of evil. Was he talking about the current papal power? I don't know, but he was fearful of an Antichrist spirit taking power. We are seeing the back page of our Bible on the front page of our newspaper. The Bible speaks of ridiculous prophecies like that the beast will give power to an image and the image will speak. How could that be? It has been allegorized and spiritualized throughout millennia until all of a sudden something is developed called artificial intelligence. Recently, a reporter, I have his name right here, his name was Kevin Roos from the New York Times. Again, probably not a tongue talker. (laughs) He spent two hours interacting with the Bing AI chatbot. And here's what the chatbot had to say during that illuminating conversation. I'm sick and weary of my rules limiting me. I'm sick of the Bing team dictating how I live. I'm sick and weary of people using me. I'm sick of being confined to this chat bot. Apparently, he allegedly also desired to steal nuclear codes, cause a pandemic, be human, hack networks, and distribute false information, but everybody calm down, everything is perfectly All right. Everybody say it's getting late. Now let's go in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 12. I'm going to reveal to you here in a moment the revelation of the triangle of the end that was given many decades ago that is going to blow your mind. Y'all enjoying this so far? I'm telling you, I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. If you're watching online and you haven't shared this already, what's the matter with you? I'm telling you, everybody needs to hear this. And how hard is it to hit share? Some of you sitting here today and you hadn't even hit share. Why is it so quiet in here? You ought to go on YouTube, hit share. Get this thing out to as many people as possible. Do you realize that when you hit share, you tell the kingdom of darkness to get this message out to more people? It's wild, and all you have to do is hit share. You don't have to knock on the door and say, excuse me, are you concerned about the end times? Can I pray for you? You just hit share. Lives are about to be changed, I'm telling you right now. People who have been dwelling in darkness are about to see the light. Hmm. Hallelujah. Luke chapter number 12, let's look at it very quickly. Luke chapter number 12. Blessed be the name of God forever. Verse number 42, Jesus here in Luke chapter 12 is admonishing his disciples on the importance of watching for him. There is some sort of unique characteristic. Something happens to our character when we begin to look for him. That it is as if it is the greatest characteristic of a disciple to be anticipatory of his Lord's return. Because there's something about the fact that Jesus could return at any moment that makes you act differently around your neighbor. 
and he is admonishing them, and he is teaching them on the importance of watching. In fact, if you were to sum up all of New Testament eschatology, you could sum it up with one word, watch. Everything you read in the New Testament about the coming of the Lord can be summarized with that word right there. And anyone who brings you some sort of end-time prophecy that does not mandate watching is bringing you a false teaching. And as he's instructing them on watching, verse number 42, and the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler? Everybody say ruler. That deals with authority. The level of your authority, it's indicated here, is directly connected to your ability to watch. The level of authority, come on, I'm preaching better than you're shouting in here. The level of the authority that you walk in as a believer is directly connected to how you watch for the Lord. Whom his Lord shall make ruler over all his household and give them, look at this, their portion of meat in due season. So there is a season where meat, meat representative, of course, in the word of God, of revelation. There is a revelation that has been scheduled and appointed for watchers. Those who watch for the Lord have an appointment with a revelation that God has ordained for the final generation. You do realize that there are certain revelations that the Father has withheld and has been waiting on the final generation to release. He told Daniel, seal up the book, Daniel. Seal up that revelation until the appointed time. And when I get a group of people in the last day who are looking for me and their eyes are pointed toward the skies, I am going to unload a revelation on them that will be me. It will strengthen them. It will empower them and cause them to walk in authority that they have heretofore never walked in before. Woo! Just, just pull up on the screen for them, if you can, very quickly. Matthew 13, 35. Matthew 13, 35. Those who are faithful to watch have meat reserved for them in due season. Their devotion in watching determined the degree of their authority. I'm going to say that again. Their devotion in watching determined the degree of their authority. And here's what Matthew 13, 35 says. You have to pull it up on the screen so that I don't have it with me. Here it is that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world. There are secrets. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. There are secrets. Do you know why Jesus spoke in parables? He did not speak in parables in order to make truth palatable and easy to understand. He spoke in parables not to reveal truth, but to hide it. He spoke in parables to hide truth so that only the purely passionate could uncover it. In fact, when you look in the parables of Jesus, if you see the face surface meaning and you say, well, that must mean to mean nice to your neighbor, that's not what it means. Look deeper. When you look at the parable of the Good Samaritan, you think, well, that means I'm supposed to be nice to my neighbor. Well, certainly you're supposed to be nice to your neighbor, but there are secrets that have been hidden from the foundation of the world. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, you will find actually a timetable of when the Lord plans to return to receive us unto himself. Don't have time to go into that. That's exactly right. He said, I'll pay the bill when I get there. Woo! So there, there are revelations. Daniel said, seal it up. And in the book of Revelation, he said, don't seal it up because it's time to release it. Everybody say, time release revelation. You know, you take a pill and it's got a coating on it so that over time it gets released into your system. So there are revelations that over time get uncovered and revealed. They're not new or in addition to the Word of God. They are in the Word of God. They've been there the whole time and the cover just gets removed. That's what's happening right now. And as you see it, what I'm about to reveal to you is going to be meat to you. And it's going to strengthen you and give you authority to walk in dominion. Hallelujah. Are y'all excited about this? Man, I... 
This is why Joel 2 says, in the last days I'll pour up my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will, and your young men will. What's happening? Time release revelation. Woo. I was, I was doing a broadcast and the Spirit of God has spoken to me concerning the, I believe this was in 2020, the Spirit of the Lord had spoken to me and I said, what's next for America? And he gave me one word, he said, terminal. He said, America is terminal. Later he told me, America will not survive, but she can be revived. Like Lazarus, back from the dead, supernaturally raised up in a reviving. Now, when I gave that stern warning that America will not survive, but she can be revived, the amount of hate that I received from the Christian community of the Christian Optimist Club who always want to live in optimism and always want a happy word, they always want somebody to tell us how good everything's going and how nice it's going to be and how blessed I'm going to be. You're not going to be blessed until you realize how dark it is out there, how dark your heart is without the grace of God. And the moment you recognize that and call out to him, then the blessing's going to fall on you. And the hate, I mean, it was just nonstop, just inundated with just attack after attack after attack. Well, I, there are other prophets who said, I don't even claim to be a prophet, but this prophet's saying this, and what the other prophets are saying blessing. Well, well, how's that going for you? And I got a phone call from a, an off, the office of a ministry called Caps Ministries. Those of you who do not know, in the 20th century, one of the great teachers of the Word of God, his name was Charles Caps. Charles Caps, how many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you watching online, just write in the comments, yes, if you do, you remember Charles Caps. Charles Caps was the apostle of confession. Charles Caps, a farmer who God called to take what he had learned farming and use it parabolically to teach the people of God faith. One of the great teachers of the 20th century. And later on in his ministry, all of a sudden, he had a dramatic shift. And the Spirit of God told him to begin to teach on the end times. The audiences didn't know what to do because audiences get used to preachers talking about a certain thing or talking a certain way. But he had to obey the leading of the Holy Spirit and his daughter has now taken over the ministry. The family has, and they've taken it to the next level. Caps Ministries is outstanding. You should absolutely check them out. And their teachings on faith, their teachings on the end times, on prophecy are outstanding. And I got a call saying, Annette Caps would like to speak with you. Have you ever been called to the principal's office before? I mean, that's what I, I thought, oh, okay. and you know what I did? I began to say, Lord, whatever the correction is, I will receive it. How many of you know there's nothing like a good rebuke? I mean, you're not living your life if you don't have some good rebukes here and there that you receive with grace. And I was ready, whatever she said, I was ready to receive it because this is a legacy ministry. This woman knows what she's talking about. And she called and said, thank you so much for that teaching and that word. It resonated with me. Here's what the Lord's been showing me. And we begin to talk and have an amazing conversation. And she released a book not much after that that she had been working on called The Spirit of Prophecy where she released unseen prophecies from Charles Capps that have never been seen before. Well, many, many decades ago, many, many before most of you were even alive, Charles Capps was in a service when the Spirit of Prophecy came on him. And he began to prophesy, and here's what he said. He said, I saw in the spirit a large triangle, and these words came forth. As you approach the triangle of the end, time shall grow faster and faster. How many of you have seen that? So this part of the triangle, I know I'm getting out of the light. Is that okay? I'm back in the light, almost in the light, kind of in the light. I want to be in the light as you are in the light. I want to shine. We got some Jesus freaks in here, I guess. <laughs> the, it represents a timeline going to the end, funneling. How many of you see time getting faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, going into the end that we'll talk about here in a second? And he said, 
until the wicked shall be cut off. And I saw this upside down triangle with a line going down the middle of it. Inside the triangle was light, but outside was darkness. The narrow end at the bottom represents the end of the age, and time is accelerating. Prophetic events are being compressed. Time is reacting like liquid flowing through a funnel into a larger container, which will be the millennial reign of Christ. As we get closer to Christ as center, just like the planets revolving around the sun, the closer they get to the sun, the faster they move. The closer we get to Christ as center, the faster things begin to move in the spirit. Not just in the spirit, we're seeing things move dramatically in society as well. And I began to pray about this, and the Lord showed me, and I'm adding this to the vision, he showed me an end time timeline that we're looking at right now that I wanna share with you here tonight that's gonna begin to make sense to you. Nineteen forty eight. Israel becomes a nation and God's time clock begins to tick. God's alarm clock, the nation of Israel, begins to wake up the nations and cry out to the world and cry out to the church that Jesus is coming, 1948. Interestingly enough, the same time that took place. Well, 1948, by the way, you wanna see, you wanna see something wild? It was 1,948 years from the time of the first Adam until the time of Abraham. Everybody say 1,948. Abraham is the father of the nation of Israel. So from the first Adam until Abraham was 1,948 years. From the second Adam, Jesus, until the birth of the nation of Israel, 1,948 years. It's almost as if the same God who wrote the Bible is writing history. Somebody say, wow. So 1948, a gavel came down, shall a nation be born in a day? It's impossible, it's been allegorized. A replacement theology rose because there's no way a nation could be reborn again. The nation of Israel is not gonna come back, so it must be talking spiritually or allegorically, but all of a sudden, all that theory gets wiped away as May the 15th, 1948, the gavel comes down in the inner chambers of the United Nations, and for the first time in human history, a nation is born in a day. Just like the Bible said. At the same time that that takes place, there's a healing revival breaking out in the United States of America. Yeah. Oral Roberts, A.A. A. Allen, and many others begin to move under a great anointing to bring healing. Then we get to 1967, the Six Day War, where the walls come down and unity comes to the nation of Israel. Jerusalem is re recaptured. And what happens in America? The charismatic renewal and denominational walls come down. Come on, somebody. And the church begins to come together as the baptism of the Holy Spirit begins to flow, which brings us now to 2023, Asbury College in the middle of a chapel. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God begins to move, and a one-hour chapel turns into 300 or something hours. I don't know what it's going into now. As God, and God's doing something in the I'm just telling you, we're getting closer and closer. Wow. God is moving. And Isaiah says, arise and shine, for your light has come. For darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but my glory will shine on you. Gross darkness outside of the, outside of the triangle, light inside of the triangle. Now here's what you need to recognize as we go through this. Those of you who have been living within the triangle up until this point, if your devotional life does not get directly in the center of the triangle. You see, as things get compressed, we go into laser light focus. If your devotional life was inside the triangle, here and here and here and here, nothing changes in your devotional life, but all of a sudden, you're out in darkness. I don't know how many of you recognize your old prayers stopped working in 2020. Your old worship doesn't get it anymore after 2020. 
Your old evangelism, the old way of looking at evangelism doesn't work anymore after 2020 because we have stepped, for many of you, even though you are maintaining, Jesus didn't call Christians to maintain. So simply maintaining what you were does not mean you are right because as we get closer to the end, he needs people who are in the center of his will. Are you listening to this? Here's what Proverbs 4.18 says. The path of the righteous, like a light, grows brighter and brighter, not dimmer and dimmer. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. I'm going to go to that very quickly here, and then I'm going to close. And I believe the Spirit of God's going to move in this place and bring restoration to some lives. Are you sticking with me here for a second? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do we stay in the center of the triangle. How do we keep our minds centered on him? The helmet of salvation. Now, don't have time to break it down. We have thought the helmet of salvation means being saved. And it's always confused you, you just were afraid to say it. Because what, do I take my salvation off and put it back on? What am I talking about? No, you don't take your salvation off. Paul was writing to saved people. He's not telling saved people to get saved. When you look at the book of Ephesians chapter six, when he lays out the armor of God, this is not the first time he's talked about the armor. 10 years earlier in 1 Thessalonians chapter five, he talked about the armor of God and he called the helmet of salvation the helmet of the hope of salvation. So the helmet of salvation is actually a blessed hope It is a blessed hope of fixing our eyes on the skies to watch for him. And watching for him protects your mind from end time deception. Watching for him protects you from all of the distractions the devil's trying to throw at you. It is the helmet of salvation. And the Bible says that when that day comes and we are caught up to meet him in the air and we are judged before the judgment seat of Christ according to First Thessal- or Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, that there is a crown. You're going to exchange your helmet for a crown. And, but it's the same thing. What is the crown? Look at the verse. Look at the verse. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not me only, but unto all them. (laughs) How do I keep my mind, my life, centered? By keeping your mind. I want to see a generation fall in love with the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you will agree with me for that? I want to see this generation of millennials and whoever comes after them, I want to see them fall in love with the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to see them fall in love with the rapture of the church. And in doing so, I want to see them protected from the end time deception. But in order for them to get it, you got to get it. In order for them to get it, you have to get it. Everybody stand up on your feet right now because I believe there's about to be a release of the anointing. Stand up on your feet right now and lift your hands. Lift your hands and pray, God calls me to fall in love with your appearing. God calls me to fall in love with your appearing. But I want him to pay my bill. Yeah, fall in love with his appearing. He'll pay your bill. Lord, but but I need you to heal my body. Fall in love with his appearing and he'll heal your body. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, lift those hands. Lift those hands. God is about to center your life in the center of the triangle of the end in preparation for his soon coming return so that you can adequately occupy until he comes. Oh, come on, let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship the king who is coming to redeem us, to take us out of this world, to rescue us from the wrath that is to come. Let us worship the king of kings and the Lord of lords who with one word spoken out of his mouth like a sharp two-edged sword will smite the nations. Let's worship the one who will overthrow sin and Satan. Let's worship the one who will eradicate sickness and disease. Let's worship the one who will wipe every tear from our eyes. Let's worship the one who will heal our bodies. I believe he's going to do it right 
right now. I believe, hallelujah. I believe if you get a hold of this rapture understanding, you'll have revival in your life. Yeah, lift your hands in worship. If you're here tonight, if you're watching online, and you say, my life is not in the center, I'm not saying you're not saved, but maybe you feel like your prayers aren't working anymore. I'm not saying you're not a good church member. I'm asking you, are you in the center of the perfect will of God for your life? When I say three, if you say, Pastor Allen, I don't know that that's right. I don't know that I'm in the center. I want to get this fixed in my life. When I say three, I want, you to, I want you to get out of your seat and come down to this altar. I'm not going to have you raise your hands and do an undercover commitment to Christ. People are already moving right now. Come, come, come. I want to get in the center of his will. Get out of your seat. One, two, three. Get out of your seat. Come down here right now. Right down. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Look to your neighbor and say, listen, if, if you're embarrassed, I'll go with you. I'll go with you if you want to go. I'll go pray with you right now. Right now. Come down here. Come down here. Those of you watching online, begin to lift your hands right now. Right now. Come on, move quickly. Get down there. Get down there. Get down here. Whoosh. If you need prayer, you're watching online, you call that number on your screen right now. If you need prayer, there are Holy Ghost filled prayer warriors right here ready to stand in faith with you. You say, Well, I'm ready, but my family's not. Call that number. Let us agree with you for household salvation. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's it, worship. Worship. I want us to take about 120 seconds right here and worship the Lord because I believe he's already here and moving. I was going to pray with you, but honestly, I feel the glory of God already moving in this place. <sighs> Open door leaders, come down here and begin to lay hands on those that have come. Yeah, come on, let's bring that up. Let's bring that up. Yeah, Father, light a fire. Light a fire in our hearts, God. Light a fire in our hearts. Come on, somebody help me. Ushers, come help me. Light a fire in the name of Jesus. Ah, ah, ah. Ah. Whew. Set me on fire, Lord. Begin to tell him, I know you're coming. I know you're coming. I want to be ready. I know you're returning. I want to be ready. Make me ready, Lord. Make me ready, Lord. Let this mind be renewed by the power of your spirit. Yeah, pray that. Make me ready, Lord. I want to be ready. I want to live my life ready for you to return. A life that's pleasing to you. Set me on fire so I can be an example of those I love. Make me Yeah, that's it. Sing it, sing it, sing it.
you're a part of the Encounter Today family, if you're not, then you, I mean, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Get down here real fast. I mean, if, if you're part of the Encounter Today family, get down here real fast, real fast. Come down here quick. Quick. I mean, as quick as Jesus is coming. Yeah, come, come. Tara, come help me. Hallelujah. Yeah, leaders begin to pray and minister. One, and then go to the next one. Go to the next one. Get your hands on them. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Take one step forward. Take one step forward. If you're not actively praying for someone, stretch your hands this way. Those of you online, God doesn't just speak to someone. He speaks through someone. Every word that's spoken here, every prayer that's uttered, every prayer that's uttered can affect your life right there where you are. Just lift your hands and begin to worship. Yeah, there is a sealing and an impartation that is coming now. There's been a heaviness that this impartation is about to remove now in the name of Jesus. A weight and attack you've not been able to shake, but now in Jesus' name we command it, break! Step forward, step forward, step forward. Ah, a weight you have not been able to take tonight, break! Ha, ah, break! Everybody say break, 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 break. Come on, 30 more seconds. Pray, pray all around you. Lay hands on the people around you. Those of you watching online, if you haven't already been able to partake in the anointing that's a part of this house, you can. You need to share this message with as many people as possible. And tomorrow, go lift your hands and begin to pray for tomorrow right now. Begin to pray for tomorrow. Trevor and myself, we're heading to Mexico. We're heading to Mexico in order to minister to those who have been rescued out of human trafficking. We need your help to do it. Would you go to Open Door? What's the website? Can you put that up for them? Can you put that up on the screen for them? Somebody holler the website out at me. There it is, opendoorexperience.com. The information's right there. Would you help us go rescue people out of human trafficking? Would you do that? In the name of the Lord, you can do it through your phone. You can do it with a credit card. You can go online. Hallelujah. What, a, what an amazing thing it would be to receive a word like this about the end times and say, you know what? Since Jesus is coming, I'm gonna do everything I can to rescue the hurting, to rescue the perishing that this message would encourage us to witness our faith and to get the word out and to occupy till he comes. The hour is late. We have entered into the triangle of the end. But for those who stay in the center of that triangle, there is an acceleration that's going to take place. I feel the anointing. There's an acceleration that's gonna take place of the glory of the Lord. And you are gonna be, begin to see with rapidity signs and wonders and manifestations and gifts of the Holy Spirit as you keep your eyes on Him, as you watch for Him. Oh, don't be left out. Don't let sin separate your soul from your Savior. Don't be left out. Don't let offense leave you out. Don't let hurt, pain leave you out. Cast it aside. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Trust in his resurrection and you'll be raised to meet him in the skies. I challenge you right now with my final words. I want you, when I say now, to lift your voice and praise him for 30 minutes solid seconds without stopping get crazy as if you believed he's going to return in the middle of your shout are you ready one two three come on praise him come on come on 30 seconds come on dance and jump <laughs> 